Ahoy there, Captain Bensi here, coming at you with another ship fitting guide for EVE Echoes. Can you believe it's already been 30 days since launch? Well, if like me you started out on launch day, then day 30's login rewards this morning would have equipped you finally with a Can You Class Battlecruiser. And ho 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 boy, those of you who played this in the final test will understand that this ship was absolutely filthy back then. Literally the most overpowered ship I have ever had the pleasure of piloting. And and that's including the worm as it was back in the open beta test. The Can You class battlecruiser that we got in the final test could do about 1600 DPS from a distance of 215 kilometers away. Needless to say, it has been a cause of concern and worry for many of us, wondering what will happen come day 30 if this ship is utterly ridiculous as it was back then. Now, the developers assured us that no, it has been nerfed, so let's have a look at whether or not that is actually the case. We're going to have a look at how you can fit this and what kind of crazy shenanigans you can get up to with it once you've got your hands on one of these itself. Now the first thing I want to talk about in regards to this is that when I talk about fitting this it is going to be on a very minimalistic cost-free approach. Ultimately the fitting that I will be showing is no skills required. The ship itself is all you will need. Doesn't matter what you've trained. You could be completely industry up to this point and you will do as well as I am with this ship. It is only using the free rigs that are available in the daily login rewards, if you've opened up the, uh, the rigs there, the prototype style rigs, because if you have a look on the market at how much decomposer rigs cost right now, oh boy, I'm not paying 240 million per rig. Sorry, that's just not happening. And the aim otherwise is to keep the fittings as cheap as possible. Basically, Mark V, because if you've just got your hands on one of these, you're not going to be at Mark VII yet, and faction fitting gear is a bit expensive to throw away on a ship like this. But we're going to have a full look at that just now. Anyway, if you do enjoy this video or find it useful, as usual, hit like on it, sub to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, ding that bell so that you know when the next video goes live, because I am uploading daily, and let me know in the comments what topics you want covered in future videos. Finally, as well, if you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, you can do so by joining me on Patreon. Anyway, I think that's enough of a preamble, let's actually have a look at this ship's stats, and then how to fit it. Back in the July final test, the Yang Jun Can Yu battlecruiser was famous for two things. Firstly, spawning a series of absolutely terrible Can Yu puns. Um, yeah, I'm kind of guilty for that myself, I'm aware. <laughs> Have a look at the thumbnail if you don't believe me. And for also being the most ridiculously overpowered ship in the entirety, as far as I'm concerned, of New Eden's history, EVE Online or EVE Echoes. It was just insane. Now the devs, as I said, did promise that they'd toned this down a little bit, so let's actually have a look at what the stats are now and how this all pans out. So looking at the Can You prototype's attributes and fittings, you can see from its fitting profile here, it's got one drone tube which takes a small or a medium drone, again that's mainly for support purposes, four high slots, three mid slots, four low slots, and then three of each of the rig types, whether that's uh, the power grid or the mechanical rigs. Its defences are fairly solid, they're actually a little bit low compared to most battlecruisers, 15,324, the majority of which is in shield, 5,483, the armour on this thing is absolutely piddly at 2,109, and the structure is 4,999. What this essentially means is that you will go through, you'll be mainly shield tanking, once you hit that armour, the armour will fly by faster than you can imagine, and then you're into structure, which does actually hold out for a fairly lengthy period of time. Capacitors also are a little bit lower than you'd expect for a ship of this size, which does cause the ship some problems, as you'll see in a moment, but again, it's a prototype, it's a free ship, we'll come to this in a moment. Decent, you know, it's a good enough capacitor, but it does cause some issues. Uh, fairly small and it's got quite a long recharge time there. Signature radius is what you'd expect for a ship of this size, but the scan resolution and the sensor strength are insane. This is a good, this is almost double what you'd expect of a battlecruiser. This can lock onto, uh, can lock onto frigates and small targets faster than a lot of cruisers can. It's insanely good at locking on quickly. Finally, then you've got a warp speed of 2.7, which is a lot faster than most battlecruisers. Um, flight velocity of 150 is on par, if slightly toward the faster end of things, along with a, a, a about averaging mass and inertia modifier for a battlecruiser. Again, these things are slow. They take a time to align and to reach warp, and then you're not going to be speed tanking anytime soon with a battlecruiser. Anyway, let's then have a look at its trait description, and oh! Where are, all those roll where are all those skill bonuses? Well, being a prototype, it has no skill bonuses whatsoever. Everything here is in the roll bonus, which if we have a look at it, 
50% increase to medium decomposer damage, 15% increase to medium decomposer optimal range, 15% shield boost, and a plus one warp stability. I don't get why it's got a 15% shield boost roll bonus. Why not just give it that amount of shield, you know? I get why it has decomposer damage and that, because it means that you can put decomposers on the standard ship and on this one and, and sort of compare them, but they'll do better here because it has the roll bonuses. I just don't get why it has the shield one. And the plus one warp stability, though, is quite nice as well, as it does mean that flat out you need to have a warp disruptor at least jamming strength 2 in order to lock this down. Now ultimately, this means that this ship does not require any form of skills whatsoever. Like the Shan Yu Destroyer, this you can just literally pick it up, jump in it, and fly it. And it will do as well ultimately as anyone else. There are decomposer skills, and of course there are battlecruiser skills as well, though battlecruiser skills admit admittedly we can't train until we're tech 7. Um, but there are like decomposer skills you can train to help out a little bit more on this. I don't really recommend it right now, as simply put, there is only one ship in the game that actually benefits from it. This one. And if you lose this ship and you run out of uh, insurance vouchers, where do you go from there? Because we don't yet know how to build the Kanyu itself, the actual mainline Kanyu ship. But as well, there is, it's a it's a cool looking ship. I like the look of this ship, I'll be honest, even though it does look like they kind of got halfway through and then stopped building it. I do like the aesthetic of it, and I've never, never made a shame on that one. But okay, so things so far look like we've had some definite solid nerfs. How does this actually go together in terms of fitting? Now, since the Kanyu prototype is a free ship that's given out to everyone with an Omega clone on day 30, and since it has no ship skill bonuses, it can be flown by everyone. If you're a miner or an industrialist and you've got no combat skills whatsoever, you can still jump in this ship, jump into space, and have fun with it. And that's something I wanted to reflect in the build that I showcased. As such, the stuff that you see in this build is either exclusively the daily login reward stuff, or it's Mark V or lower items that are readily available on the market for super, super cheap. The idea here being that any one of you can build this ship now, jump out into space, and have a bit of fun with it. That does mean that there are going to be some of you in the comment section down below who say, hey, look, I managed to get four times your DPS, 12 times your uh, armor, and at three times the range sort of thing. Ultimately, yeah, I know that's possible. That means you've probably gone for decomposer skills. You've probably gone for those 240 million decomposer rigs that I mentioned. Ultimately, the point I'm going for here is that this is a nice, cheap, accessible build that anyone can try. For the high slots then, we've gone for four of the returned medium jet stream decomposers. These were given part away as part of the daily login rewards on, I think, day 28. You'll have had a load of these, you can fit them to other cruisers as well, but the Can You prototype does get those bonuses. I think it's, what, 50% uh, medium decomposer damage and 15% medium decomposer optimal range. So they do a little bit better on this ship than they do just if you're looking at the basic stats. And ultimately, so you'll see that some of these stats might change compared to how you've seen them in your item hanger. That's because they're fitted to the ship and all the bonuses, therefore, are being applied. Now, decomposers are an unusual type of turret. They don't have a long range and a short range version, they only have the one type. Now here you can see that they are mainly in kinetic damage, 287 kinetic, with 176 explosive damage. Looking at the rest of their stats, the unusual part of these as well is that they only have optimal range. There's no accuracy fall off, there's nothing like that. It's either you hit or you miss, you're in range or you're not. There's no fall off, no gradual, you are either in range or you miss. 31.5 kilometers with the skills on the ship, uh, the bonuses from the ship and the tracking computer, which we'll come to later. The tracking speed of these is also astonishingly slow at only 14.36. This is a very slow tracking speed that means anything moving at a decent angular velocity is going to cause you problems. That's why you want to maintain that range as best you can, and we have the stasis webifiers in the mid slots, which I'll come to in just a moment. Activation time of 8.34 means these do activate fairly slowly for quite a short range turret, and most notably here, they do have an activation cost of 31.8 gigajoules. That is a lot of capacitor gets chewed firing these four guns, so that's something we need to bear in mind as well. Now, talking about the tracking speed and how this struggles against a fast-moving ship, ultimately, that's why I've gone for three Mark V Stasis Webifiers. Each of these will reduce the flight velocity of a target ship by 51%, meaning if I put all three of these on, you get 51%, 25%, and then about 12%. 12% speed if they're within 11.2 kilometers, or I can apply it to three different ships and slow them all down. The aim here is basically that if anything happens to get within that 11.2 kilometers, I can slow it the heck down, aim my decomposers at it, and punch it out of the sky as quickly as possible, because if it gets that close, it is going to start being a problem. 
Now, ultimately, I would put a drone in here as well. I've only got small drones, as you can see, readily available. I haven't really bothered, but let's just pop one in for the time being. Sorry, let's put that actually into the drone tube would help. That'll take our DPS up a little teeny tiny touch. 236.95, 14.88 extra DPS thanks to that drone. It's almost not worth it. Get a medium drone in there if you can. Ultimately, again, they are quite expensive, which is why I haven't really showcased one in this video. It will help if something gets up close and personal. Don't expect it to do much in the way of actual additional damage. It's just there. If anything gets close, you can web it, put the drone on it, and then shoot it out the sky. Now, talking about shooting it out of the sky, in the low slots, then we have the returned macro particle stabilizer. This is the weapon upgrade low slot for decomposers. Straight away, it gives a 5% damage bonus, as you can see here, and you can activate it for an 8.03% damage bonus as well. I'm going to put a graph on screen now that actually showcases these, because you're given four of these um, in your daily login rewards. If you, you can choose to equip all four, but they do give somewhat less of a boost as you hit about the third and the fourth. They start, the curve starts to go down. As, as such, therefore, I've only put two in. You can go for three or even four if you just really want to maximize your damage, but simply put, for me, this was kind of a nice middle ground. You might even actually only go down to one of these, but we'll come to that in a moment. Now, the third low slot I have here is a Mark V tracking computer. This one is one of the items, again, like the Webifiers, you'll need to buy off the market. Nice and cheap, though. Mark V tracking computer, this increases the range of your weapons um, and it increases their tracking speed. And that's with it cold. You can then activate it for a boost to the range and a boost to the tracking speed. Now, again, I'm going to put a, uh, a graph on screen that I worked out this morning. I sat there and I put one, uh, zero, one, two, three, and four tracking computers on, showcased what the range of the, uh, the guns became cold, and then I activated them one by one as well. So I went out with one, showed cold, one showed it hot, two cold, two hot, three cold, three hot, four cold, and four hot. That gives you the graph curve that you can see on screen now to again give you an idea of the kind of ranges you can achieve with this if you want. If, like me, you're sick of having a particular Polish guy sitting outside your base in a car in a, sorry in a stabber that he's getting a 70 kilometer shot off at you with, here I can actually get above that 106 kilometers. I can hit that guy from, and that will be optimal damage at 106 kilometers, which, quite frankly, <laughs> is actually kind of terrifying. It's not as high DPS as you're seeing on the screen with the build I'm showing. Um, obviously, you're sacrificing those uh, those particle accelerators, but it is still shooting at 106 kilometers, which is kind of hard to pass up on. You've got to try that at least once. Finally, then for the low slots, I've gone for a Mark V medium shield booster. Again, this was just the cheapest shield booster that I had lying around. Ultimately, that's just to repair our shields. You can actually go for something like a Mark V adaptive shield hardener, which will just boost all of your resistances. You can then try and sit at a bit of range. If you're going for something like the, uh, the, 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 the long range, I would actually fit three of the tracking computers and then one hardener. That will allow you to sit between 39 and 86 kilometers um, and still shoot whilst having a little bit of tank. Now for the rigs. For the power grid rigs, I went for foot, uh, three of the Core Defense Force Field Extender prototypes. Again, these are daily login rewards. They come out of the ship rig crates. You go for the ship rig crates, open those for shield rig crates, and then you can get three of these Core Defense Force Field Extender prototypes. They increase the size of your shield by 12%. More shield, more resistance means you stay alive that little bit longer. Always, always useful. In the mechanical slots, though, we've gone for a couple of slightly different ones here. These come out of the uh, the indust industrial rig boxes. I went for a capacitor control circuit prototype, which increases, sorry, makes the capacitor recharge faster, 7.5% faster recharge time. Um, then with a semiconductor memory cell prototype to increase the total capacitor available on this ship by 10.5%. Uh, that means ultimately I've got a bigger capacitor and it recharges faster. Useful when your weapons use so much capacitor every time they fire. Finally then, the third of the mechanical slots here, I've gone for an auxiliary thruster prototype just to give myself the extra 6% flight velocity. Ultimately, you can go for whatever you fancy really in this one. There's no real bonuses to anything here. You might want to go for, say, the, the ability to lock on even faster. The Can You prototype is insanely fast at locking on, but you could rig for extra sensor strength to do that even more. You could ultimately accept the fact you're going to get a penalty and rig for more in the way of capacitor. It's kind of up to you. This third slot is very much an open one. I just went for the auxiliary thruster prototype because to me it gave me that little bit faster movement speed and I just can't stand how slow battlecruisers are. 
Now, ultimately, with that fit here, you can see I'm getting a solid 227 DP sorry, 222 DPS as standard. That's with it cold, just off the uh, off the turrets with 24 sorry 14.88 kilometers. Yeah, 14.88 DPS off the drone. Wow. That was uh, tough to say. 14.88 DPS from the drone as well, if it's within range. Ultimately, you're getting about 236.95. That's a very, very cheap fit. My defences here are at 18,417. Um, most of that is in the shields there. 8,575 shields, 2,109 armour, as I said. That goes in about two or three hits. And then down to your structure hit points, 4,999. Capacitor is not stable on this. If you have everything active, which ultimately is never really going to happen, then you only have 2 minutes 30 to really last on this one. That's why you might change the shield booster for something like a shield extender, or even, as I said, the adaptive shield hardeners, if you have one lying around. Ultimately, keep it cheap. If you're going for Mark 7, a Tier 7 or below anomalies, this will do this quite comfortably. Smalls are dead easy. Mediums, very straightforward. Larges, you have to be a little bit careful with a large, but it can do it. I was actually doing Tier 8, so uh, Tier 8 Smalls this morning as well uh, in, in, in our system. That did require a little bit more sort of finesse to it, but it is possible. You take a lot of damage and you do have to know when to disengage, but it is possible. And ultimately, that's how I would fit the Kanyu prototype. This thing is insanely good. Ultimately, compare that to what you can do with something like a Caracal Navy issue, and it's fairly similar. You're looking at a build that's not dissimilar from one of the cruisers that you can already get, but it's completely free. Yes, you can also go a little bit further with this one. As I said, if I go into the market, you'll see that there are decomposer rigs available, but let's have a look at what price they actually are, because when I saw them earlier, I nearly had a heart attack. Let's go into the weapon rigs, close down the rail guns, lasers, cannons, decomposer, collision accelerator, level one. Oh, they've actually dropped quite considerably in price to only 160 million. Only 160 million for a 12.5% DPS increase to your decomposers. Yeah. Now, I did notice here that the decomposer bursts are a little bit cheaper. 7.5% activation time adjustment. These, uh, let's have a look at them now. 47 million. Only 47 million. The other one I would look for, where are we? That's the ambit. The ambit could be useful on these, in fairness, for that extra range. But it's the discharge elutriation, 12.5% reduction to in, uh, the, the capacitor requirement on these weapons. Here, these cost uh, 18 million, only 18 million for these ones. Those would be the three that I would put in there. Don't go for two of the damage ones. They're too expensive to have a penalty on. One of the damage, one of the discharge, and one of the burst will give you the best DPS, along with sustaining your capacitor a bit more. But again, oh boy, the cost of that makes my head hurt. Oh, I've seen people. I've seen people already showcasing this with three of those collision accelerator rigs on it. Three collision accelerator rigs is already more expensive than my Dramiel or my Succubus. That's oh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I think you would have to have rather foolishly skilled into uh, into the decomposer skills in order to actually justify that. And I don't recommend going into the decomposer skills. Let's have a look at those just to showcase what they are. If we go into your weapon technology and down to decomposer, you would then have here we are medium decomposer command gives you a 20% increased damage and a 10% increase to tracking speed. And then you have upgrade for 15% damage and 10% optimal range. Now you can skill into those, but quite frankly to me, that's what, seven, 800 million, 800,000 skill points that is only going into one exact ship. If you lose that ship, we don't know how you get the other, uh, the other Yanjung ships yet. So that's kind of it. You'd be lost. You'd be gone. You've got nothing to fly. But speaking of the other Yangjun ships, let's have a look at the actual Kanyu itself and how this differs. Now, if we have a look at the Kanyu here, you can see that it does have a slightly different coloration to it. It's a little bit more golden in color. I actually really like the coloration on that. It's such a pretty ship. I, I, I disliked this thing in the final test. It kind of ruined the game for me, but I love how it looks. Now, looking at its attributes and fittings, ultimately this adds in an additional mid slot, four mid slots, and an additional low slot. And that additional low slot adds an awful lot of capabilities to this ship. That means you can add another tracking computer, or you can add another particle accelerator, or you can add more tank. You can even add propulsion to it if you want it. Something I'll eventually cover if I finally work out how you get a can you. I'll uh, jump into one, try fitting it, and seeing what I can do with it. 
Defense, you can see, is absolutely massive on this. The shield and the structure is astronomical. The armor is actually fairly substantial. It's still piddly compared to the shield and the structure, but it is, it's twice the prototype, for crying out loud. Capacitors are a lot stronger here. I don't think it's going to have as much problem uh, keeping control of those weapons. Signature radius is a little bit larger, but then the scan resolution and sensor strength, again, are still the same. and going to be great there. Similar flight velocity, warp speed, mass, and inertia. That means, ultimately, straight up and down, you've got better low slots and mid slots. You've got a significantly improved defense. The current canyon prototype is a little bit of a glass canyon. Canyon? Can you? <laughs> Cannon. But... Let's have a look at the trait description. Now, this is where things really come into their own. The roll bonus here, 25% increase to medium decompose optimal range rather than 15%, 80% medium decompose damage up from 50%, and command burst module slots as well, which are kind of a... Uh, they're kind of a stat boost pulse that a ship can do. They're not in the game yet, but keep an eye on this channel. I'll do videos on that when they are. Now, suddenly, you are getting Decomposer skills. In this case, though, you do require Advanced Medium Decomposer Upgrade, which means you've probably already done all of decompo uh, Medium Decomposer Operation, Medium Decomposer Upgrade, and now you're into the Advanced. That's a lot of skill points to start investing in this, but an additional 10% Medium Decomposer damage means a total you can have 130% increase to the Decomposers and 5% additional Decomposer Optimal Range for a full 50% increase there, so this can get some serious range on it. Advanced Battle Cruiser Command then gives you additional shield, increasing that tank even higher, and a 10% warp speed. 10% warp speed is actually not bad at all. 50% additional warp speed onto what is already 2.7 means you're getting a quick bit of maths there, about 4.2, somewhere in there, so you're actually warping as fast as a destroyer, which is quite nice if you're jumping from system to system with one of these things. But there we have it. That is everything I think I want to say there about the Can You Pro prototype. Hopefully that gives you some ideas on how to fit it, gets you jumping out into one of these things, having a bit of fun with it. Is it as broken as it was in the final test? No. Nowhere near. They've toned this down now to the point where it's still useful. You can have a lot of fun with this if you don't have combat skills. This is a great ship just to jump in and try and clear some tier 7 anomalies or any of the storyline missions. This will do that astonishingly well, and with the storyline missions you don't even have to worry about the fact that some of them have warp disruptors because the Can You prototype has warp stability built in. It's a kind of ship you can just jump in, have a bit of fun with, regardless of what your actual clone skills are. Even if you're not skilled for combat, you can have a lot of fun with this, do a lot of interesting things, without it being overpowered. And so, Netties, if you're watching this, thank you. You have struck the balance there that I was desperately hoping you would. We've got a ship that is fun to use, is enjoyable for everyone, but does not flat-out replace everything that we already have. If you're still flying something like a Caracal Navy issue or a Stabber Fleet issue, you are still going to do better with that than you'll be able to do here with the Can You. It's just now an option for people who don't have the skills to have fun. And I'm all for people having fun. Anyway, folks, that's just my opinions. Those are my thoughts and everything that I think about the Can You prototype. Obviously, I want to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this ship, what you think, how you've been fitting it, what kind of fun have you been having fun with, uh, been doing with the Can You. Let me know. Come find me on Twitter as well. Send me some screenshots of your builds and let me know what you've been doing. I want to see it. I want to chat with you guys. Otherwise, though, folks, thank you for watching all the way to the end. And as usual, happy sailing and see you in New Eden.